All right, guys, welcome back with my favorite person in the world here, Coach Corby. We're talking about how impatience almost ruined me. And uh, Corby, as soon as I told you this topic, you said, yep, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk a bit about uh, what this looks like. And uh, I first, the first thing to set up is that this, this thing is a muscle, the ability to develop patience. I was talking to my kids the other day. I asked them, do you guys know what the definition of patience is? And they actually gave some really interesting answers. They're actually pretty spot on. But, uh, you know, we think about patience, like what is that? What is patience? And why is that such a crucial uh, muscle to develop? Oh, you're asking me? Oh, it's easy. well, I could, I could tell you too, but you go first. Uh, the reason why patience is, is uh, important is because everything takes a certain amount of time. You know, you can't rush it. And I always say one of the best ways to learn patience is to, for everybody in their lifetime, at some point, I think everybody should make bread from scratch at least once, hmm. not with help by yourself. And there's no way to rush that process. Think about it. You, there's no way you can force the dough to rise. There's no way you can force any of those things to happen. You have to be patient to get good bread. And the most important thing is you have to do everything in order. You can't put the bread in the oven, then suddenly remember, oh, I needed yeast, and then sprinkle it on the top and hope that it rises. So in life, when I think of patience, I always think of a loaf of bread. Hmm. For me, that's I what I, when, when I see patience, that's what I think of. You got to do the steps right. You got to be yeah. patient. You got to allow time for things to mature and grow before you can actually get the result. Yeah. I think the big thing I think about is that impatience probably leads to more self-sabotage mm -hmm. than, than anything else. And when you jump to hasty conclusions, you end up creating these artificial timelines in your mind. And when people or processes fail to align to this timeline in your mind, the mind just starts running wild. And you start to believe lies from the past. You begin to question your abilities, your motives, your intentions. You start to question uh, everything you start to get very unreasonable and i think this leads to um you know different uh, unfortunate outcomes you know first outcome is that you look really desperate right you you can come across as desperate and you know it's hard to it's hard to operate from a place of being desperate you know what i'm saying you know it's hard to agree it's hard to create content. It's hard to sell. It's how to go show up. It's hard to show up to, uh, you know, coaching calls if you're in a state of being desperate and people can feel that, right? It, people don't even know how to react to somebody who's desperate because it's like, is this guy stable? So you end up killing off a lot of deals and a lot of relationships when you're operating from a place of desperate. Is desperateness a word? <laughs> Desperation. <laughs> Desperation. I, I like desperateness. That's, that's, a, that's a good new word that we just made up. We can coin it and trademark it. <laughs> and I think this, I think the second problem, uh, maybe even more importantly, is that it leads to, as I was saying, self-sabotage and it, because it clouds your judgment, it detracts from your credibility and it can even damage relationships. You know, I, we've seen this in our own coaching program where people have damaged their relationship with us uh, because they felt they should be getting an ROI faster and, uh, I don't know. Maybe we didn't explain this properly. Maybe this is why we're doing the podcast today, but they damage their relationship by saying, Oh, I'm not seeing the value. And it might be because uh, they don't understand that 20% of transformation is information and 80% of transformation is from implementation and perspiration. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So people come in and you know, they, they don't get new information. So they, in their mind, not able to see the value. And it's more because they haven't implemented the information they have or the new information they're given, which then uh, affects their expectations and then helps them, uh, sorry, then leads to them uh, being impatient saying, all oh, this doesn't work. So I think this is a big one. You know, that's why maybe they say patience is a virtue because, you know, patience really comes down to, you know, if you look at the noun of impatience, it's really good. The capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, that's, that's incredible. I never looked at it that way, but that's absolutely spot on. 
I guess that's why it's in the dictionary. So Corby, what would you encourage uh, to someone, you know, they're having a heart. Let me ask you a question. So how would you flex your patient's muscle? Like, how do I make this muscle bigger? The ability to uh, increase my capacity and accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. Um, you got to have a really clear goal of what you want. Hmm. It's, it's no point. Like, otherwise you just out here, you know, I always say this, if you're in a rat race and you win, you're still a rat, right? So the idea is when you have patience, you know that on the other side of this rat race is some goal or some tangible thing that you can have or intangible thing. So let's say for in our world, fit pros or coaches or consultants, on the other side of us working hard is client success stories. That's yeah. why I do what I do. I, I love to hear that story when somebody wins. And, but the fun part for me, I love to hear the story, but for me, when I hear the story, I think about the journey. Mm. So the journey of the person struggling, the journey of all the things that didn't go the way they thought, all of, all of, that's the thing I think of when I hear the story. Even though the story gets the glory, it's the time under tension that made the difference. Mm. Well, I might wanna write that down. Time under tension <laughs> that made the difference. <laughs> so I think that's the key. When you're in a scenario where you know it's not going to be instant, that's when everything changes. Mm. So that's why crock pot food tastes better than microwave food. I love it. So understanding is going to take time. Yeah, time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If you look at any other industry too, I mean, how many restaurants turn a profit, you know, in month one? How many gyms turn a profit in year one? You know, how many people go to school and then after four years of education, they're, you know, paying off their education in, in the very first year. But it seems like in business, people join coaching programs and they, they expect a, you know, 3x ROI in the first month. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I expect to uh, expect to lose 30 pounds in the first uh, 30 days of this coaching program or I'm not seeing the value. It's like, OK, well, coach definitely has to set expectations and um I think, you know, I love what you said also, like be prepared uh, for measured growth, right? The, the growth will come, but it's going to be measured, right? Absolutely. And, and, mm -hmm. and there'll be a lot more maybe growth at the start, and then it might slow down. We're experiencing this in 75 hard. And I think also uh, what a lot of people don't understand is that when you're first starting, you're building a, a foundation, right? Absolutely. You know, you think uh, like professional athletes like LeBron James, you know, you know, were produced overnight, what, you know, it looks like that they, you know, they're produced overnight, come right out of high, high school and they're crushing it. What you don't hear is that these guys started playing basketball at the age of five, six or 12, you know, and spent 15 plus countless hours in the gym every single day doing the fundamentals, the basic fundamentals, right? Larry Bird used to shoot hundreds of baskets every single day before school right? You got to build that foundation, right? You look at the wineries out there. I'm going wine tasting after uh, 75 hard and some of the great wine I'll taste. <laughs> I mean, they made it 20, they, some of the best wine I have had, they waited 20 years before that bottle achieved the wow factor. Yet we want to have success in, in 20 days. Well, I'm well, paying I, for it. I'm I like, 100% well, agree. Yeah. I agree with you. I like, I, I can't agree with you more. Here's what I found out. People don't want challenge. Mm. People want tricks mm. instead of changing. Mm. So they don't want challenge to get there. They just want a trick that's going to get them over the hurdle. Amen. Yeah. So that, that's where I think the problem is. We, we live in a microwave society, but we don't realize that all of the great results that we see out here were from a crock pot. It's these mm -hmm. people that pop up overnight and you go, wow, that guy just out of nowhere. No, he's been doing it for decades. So they get the right to pop up out of nowhere. They, it's like that yeast it has been bubbling underneath. And now when you put it in the oven, it only takes 15, 20 minutes, but it took 15 years to rise before they got that 15 minutes of fame. I love it. So good. So, Hey, listen, everybody, if there's one thing you take away from today's podcast is to really visualize your end result. And to know that 
in order to get the whole result that you want, it's going to have to go through a long process, just like that amazing bottle of wine that was aging in the barrels before it reached your glass. That was a 20 year process. And this is what us entrepreneurs need to aim for. We need to aim for the 20 year process, not the 20 day process and to not lose focus of your end result, your desired end outcome, and just keep moving forward. And every day you do that, you are practicing building the muscle of patience, which will pay dividends in your personal life, your business life, and uh, in your physical life in all areas. So Corby, great podcast today. Hope you guys all enjoy this one. Uh, please share this one on your socials. We're going to knock out a couple new episodes here for you. Nice and short, right to the point, lots of value. If you're enjoying this, all we ask you is to pay a small fee of sharing this at Vince Del Monte and uh, share what was helpful to you today. And we'll see you on the next one. Ciao, ciao.